Yeah, so it's arts education. Yeah. Um, so we talked a lot about it uh, this evening and why it's so important and how uh, it can be so impactful for young people to have access to arts education. Um, some of the best work I did that Jennifer told you about earlier was a program called Next Steps, which uh, students uh, with autism could come into first stage and experience a theater class and, and be in a creative, fun space. Uh, and I want to make sure that every kid in America has access to equitable arts education, that every kid in this country uh, has some sort of programming that is empowering them to be their true selves. And I see that uh, in theater and in the arts. Um, I actually spent some time at the or or Orlando Rep earlier today meeting with students. It's awesome. Um, they're, they're rehearsing for a production of The Lion King Jr. Oh, and they performed so Circle of Life for me, and it was incredible. Wow. Um, but we had a nice Q&A session, and kids asked the best questions. Um, and, and one kid asked the same question, what are you going to do as first gentleman? And, um, and, a, and then another kid asked, um, what are you going to do when, if people hate that idea? Um, like, how are you? But she really meant it from a, a real place. So I talked about like why I love theater and why I think every kid deserves access to theater and how it shaped my life and how it changed my life and I'm gonna use the power of the, the White House and the East Wing and, and do my best to work with every other uh, part of the administration to, to make sure that we're pushing arts education. And then, and then she asked the question, are you prepared for um, the idea that like, some people might hate your idea? Um, which I thought was so powerful. So we got to talk about hate uh, and negativity a little bit. And then another kid asked, and, and these are like young kids. These are like 10, 12 year old kids and a um, wide range. And, and a kid asked, um, how are you gonna convince people uh, to like theater? And <laughs> I asked them, uh, how many of you know who Michelle Obama is? And they did. So what, what was Michelle Obama's initiative? And they all knew what her initiative was. And that's the power that the office holds, right? That even young people learn the importance of what you're talking about, what you're advocating for from that office. I also think another really important thing that the East Wing can do is simply show up for people. Uh, just simply go out there and make people feel like they belong and they fit. And not just, not just like the 50% of the country that voted for you, but all Americans. To, to make sure that all Americans feel like they fit. And use the power of that office to just spread a message of love and inclusivity and acceptance. Um, and, and I'm really excited for that because I think, you know, out of the litany of egregious things that have come from this administration, it's, it's a simple fact that they hate most of us. Um, and they don't, they don't show up for us. And you know, as a, as an educator, I'm thinking every day about what messages are young people getting from this administration. And uh, it hurts. It hurts as an adult to watch young people living in in this country where the president of the United States is just trying to is trying to make it harder for transgender students to exist. In, in school, and and they're telling basically any kid, uh, if you're not white or straight, that you don't fit, that you you don't fit in the American story, which is not true. And I think it's time that a White House sticks up for every American, and you see a president and a first gentleman going out there every day, making sure that everyone knows that they fit.